Okay guys, today we're going to take a look at the To-Go Systems Little Joe Shovel. Uh, this does not look like a traditional shovel. Uh, that's because it's not. It's a multifunctional, folding, very compact, very heavy duty, multi-tool, so to speak, for woods use and for keeping in your car. Real quick, I'll run down some of the specs. It has a 3CR 13 MOB stainless steel blade. Yes, that's a mouthful. It has a aluminum, maybe 7075 or 6061 tubular aluminum handle. So in this configuration, it is 20 and 3 quarters inches, so almost 21 inches long. So what I love about this shovel is you can use it short or you can unscrew this, extend it, And now you're looking at a 27 and a half inch long shovel. The weight of this bad boy is 33 ounces without the sheath, so right around the two pound mark. It has a, a uh, liquid filled compass on the end here, and it also has a compartment down there. So you can store survival supplies, uh, maybe some 550 cord, a lighter, a ferro serum rod, uh, fishing line, fish hooks, who knows? Anything that you can fit in there um, reasonably well without it being too tight. Um, and then the compartment is also waterproof. So a good place to just store some odds and ends. It has a three position head. So pretty much you unscrew this. And now you have a matok or a pick, which you can use it in the extended, but in my use, I actually found out it's a little more, it's a little easier to use it in the short configuration because um, you're going to be kneeling anyways. So you don't need a lot of le leverage, um, but just to loosen up the ground, um, say digging a fire pit or a cat hole or a water hole or some of that sort. folds up. The folded length is 13 and 1 quarter inches long. What that means is pretty much any day pack out there, this fits completely inside. Um, or you can strap it to the outside. Um, I'm going to roll in some footage, some testing footage and whatnot, and you'll see uh, different ways I carried it in my pack. A few other features this offers is two hex heads right here. Um, it seems gimmicky, but at the same time, it's like, why not? Why not throw them in? Um, I mean, it just adds the multifunctionality. I believe this kind of looks maybe like a 3 8 or 10 millimeter, and then this is probably a half inch slash like 12-ish millimeter, 12, 13 millimeter right here. The other benefit of having these is in the snow and also, um, you know, in dirt, and in sand, like say you're at a beach or something like that, but in snow, um, you can pack the snow down, jam this in, and run a guy line for a shelter through these holes. You can run two to different points, or you can just have a loop around with a top line hitch to tighten and loosen like a shelter or a tent or you know what have you. The blade thickness on here is 2.5 millimeters, so three millimeters is around an eighth inch, so a little under an eighth inch, but thick nonetheless. It's some pretty beefy construction. Okay, so what I like about this shovel is it provides a multi-use tool. The functions that you can do with this I think makes up for its two pounds of weight. The functions I used it in was a shovel, duh, a pick slash matok, a machete, or a chopper, I didn't use it in, in this function, but you could use it as a defensive tool. I'll talk about that in a second. You can use it as a knife. As you can see here, it has a decently sharp um, chisel grind blade, so you pretty much have a bevel on one side, flat on the other. 
I talked about it acting as a snow hold for shelter craft. You could also use it at like a beach and like beach sand. Um, so let's go back to defensive tool. What do I mean by defensive tool? Like, would you pack this and like if somebody attacked you? That's not what I mean by defensive tool. I'm talking more about dangerous animals in the woods um, and possibly in the city, but you're not going to be probably carrying this around with you. Um, you could possibly have this in your car though, but I'm talking about, um, am I talking about bears? Not really. Um, I mean, maybe as a last, last ditch effort, but, um, you know, feral animals, whether that's coyotes that are, you know, giving you trouble or wolves or, um, maybe even like rabid dogs, maybe where you're camping is, you know, just off the beaten path, it's still kind of within city limits, but it's not like a dedicated campground. A, a rabid dog, um, you know, different rabid animals, vicious d dogs and whatnot. I'm not advocating like killing things with this just for the fun of it, but you know, if they are coming at you and you don't have a firearm on you, some people talk about a knife and whatnot, but you know, with a knife, you have to get within what a foot away from them and like stab them and hope they don't bite you and all that stuff. Um, some people, you know, might be like, oh, I can throw my knife and, or throwing knives and all that crap. Um, this weighs two pounds. So even if, I, and I did throw this a little bit just for fun, I'll roll some of that footage in, but, um, I'm not talking about a throwing knife as like you throw it and it gets stuck in a tree or whatever, or a tomahawk or something like that. Um, you know, so some people think. So some people think, oh, okay, just carry a tomahawk and you can throw that. Um, this is two pounds, so no matter what area the animal gets hit with, you're still talking about two pounds at a high velocity of speed. And the length of this, you can just whip this super hard and pretty accurately. Um, that's what I'm talking about, you know, as a defensive option. If they're really close up on you, um, you're talking about, a little over two feet with a handle extended to reach compared to like a knife where you know they have to get really close to you so two feet of reach you can swing this bad boy probably once and you can knock an animal cold I did use this as a shovel and a talk most of the time I will tell you and I'm going to roll the footage in the ground was frozen so some of you guys might be thinking like oh that sucks as a shovel it's barely digging no um, I talk about that <clears throat> in my test footage but <clears throat> I was testing it the first week of March in northern Minnesota. The ground's frozen five feet down. But even though the ground was frozen, this still dug reasonably well. Um, <clears throat> I did not abuse this tool. I did not like torture test it or whatever, but I believe I did test it heavily and thoroughly. Uh, the other aspect I used it as was a, a machete or a chopping tool. So there is a caveat here. And you'll see in some of the test footage what I'm talking about. But two things. First, if you're using it to chop, you use it with a handle fully collapsed. Uh, there's there's actually only one other video out there, Southpaw Bushcraft. She was testing this out and she didn't think you had to have the handle fully collapsed. And to her credit, it makes perfect sense to have the handle fully extended because you get the most amount of swing. But having the handle fully collapsed gives it added strength. So pretty much it just beefs up this handle because these shoulders rust against um, <clears throat> right there and kind of gives it more compressive strength. So it just makes the handle you know twice, three times as strong. But as a chopping tool, this thing worked decent. Now, am I saying like this is... Um, a replacement to a machete. No, this is a multi-use tool. A machete or a large knife or whatever, all those, you know, parings and go locks and, you know, those 10 inch blade knives and whatnot that people baton and chop with. Those probably are more efficient than this. On the flip side, this is, chopping is not its primary or only use. So that's what I'm talking about. This is a multi-use. This is like the Leatherman of shovels. Um, so it does a lot of things, but it doesn't. It's not specialized in any of those aspects. 
a lot of people are like, I want a dedicated chopper to whatever. Listen, if like all you're going to be doing is chopping at a log for two hours to film a video, yeah, pick up like a, fancy, you know, oh an Essie Hoonless or a Becker BK9 or, you know, any of those more popular 10 inch, 9, 10 inch blade knives that are kind of designed for it. If all you're going to be doing for days on end is going through the Amazon jungle, um, you know, clearing paths through the jungle, then pack, you know, a 20 some inch Latin machete. I'm not saying this is a replacement for any of those things. I'm saying this is a multi-use tool. But when it comes to chopping, this thing works very well. And, you know, chopping is more of kind of a, kind of a more uh, heavy duty aspect. And you won't be doing it all the time. You know, a lot of these videos act like you're going to be chopping for hours on end and, you know, stocking up cordwood for an entire winter. Most people out there, they're going to be doing overnight or um, two, three day night camps. So you're talking about a couple hours at the most of wood and fuel collection. So I could have taken this to like a 12 inch log and just chopped for 30 minutes on end. I didn't do that because to me it's not that smart. I'd rather just take like a saw to it and that's not the main design premise of this tool. But for quickly delimbing, um, you know, down branches and stuff like that, um, you know, you can break them off with your hands, but or you can just swing this and it will take a couple of branches off in one swing. Um, you know, anything, I'm not saying it can't, I'm saying anything, you know, that big is reasonable to expect. I'm not saying it can't chop bigger stuff. I'm just, I'm just saying if that's all you're going to be doing, you might be better served with a like dedicated tool to do that. Um, throw this into like a bug out bag is an awesome philosophy because of its multifunctionality. It can do so many things pretty good, you know? So instead of packing a two pound uh, chopping knife or a two pound hatchet or an ax, you can pack this and it might not be as good as those at chopping wood, but that's not all you're going to be doing. This is good at uh, digging latrines, cat holes, water holes, uh, Dakota fire holes, you can use it as a pick or a matok to loosen the earth and chop roots. You can use it like we talked about as a machete or a chopper. You can use it as a defensive tool. So let's talk about its competition. So this has some competition out there. I'm not saying this is the only one on the market. Uh, the, its closest competitor actually, in my opinion, is the cold steel shovel. Cold steel shovel has been out for a long time. It's really heavy duty. It's tried and trusted tried and you know tested and everything they cost between 25 to 30 dollars they have a high carbon steel blade pretty thick blade they're about 20 inches overall they weigh about a pound and a half they're probably equal to if not stronger than the shovel but the added advantage of this is it can bend to a 90 to be used as a matok and then it can also be when it's fully folded this stored size is a lot smaller than that cold steel shovel and in extended position the handle on this is seven to eight inches longer than that shovel for okay. about double the price i got it another one out there pretty po oh not too popular is the Crowville, and i don't know who makes it but it's that guy from the doomsday prepper show that dumbass that takes 22 rifle and shoots it through his thumb allegedly um that's Pretty much the main reason I wouldn't buy that product is the guy just seems like a total joke. But keeping it real, um, the Crovel it looks cool, it looks you know flashy, and it is kind of like this a multi-purpose, multi-functional tool. But you're talking low end, hundred dollars up to hundred and fifty dollars, and you're talking the the lightest one I found was three pounds, and they go up to five and a half pounds. So the one that's resembles this the most. I think it's called the Crowville Extreme 2 or the Crowville Extreme 3 and it has the folding blade and I believe it can fold in the 90 degree position and the handle might be a little bit longer but you're talking five and a half pounds so it's two and a half pounds is pretty much more than double the weight of this and you're talking three times the price 150 bucks but for keeping in a car the Crowville is a lot more badass I'll give it that <clears throat> but for packing you know 
I'm in a man portable system like a bug out bag or get home bag or any of those aspects, I think this is much better suited to that. Uh, the D handle mini shovel. I have a couple of these scattered around, but I'm talking about those miniature D handle shovels you get at the home improvement store and they cost like anywhere from like five bucks up to 15 bucks. And that's pretty much what I carry like whenever, you know, whenever we go camping or hiking or whatever. Another competitor to this is the original E-Tool and not any of those Chinese garbage knocks off. I'm talking about the USGI military E-Tool. They're kind of hard to find. I believe you can find them on Amazon for around $60. Sure, they're more expensive than those cheap ones, but far and above, it's you're paying straight for quality. I remember using one of those as a kid and it just like, it it seemed to like live in the woods forever and it like never broke and all that stuff. Another option is the Gerber E-Tool. So it's pretty much resembles the original E-Tool, but it has some um, kind of high strength polymer like handles and stuff like that. I'll be honest, I haven't used that one, but reading reviews and whatnot, out of the knockoffs of the original E-Tool, that one seems to be the best one out there and you're talking between 40 and 60 dollars for that one i'm not even going to compare this to any of the cheap coleman trade um sog all those cheap trifold e-tools out there i've used a couple of them um Koglins, you know all those ones you're talking between 10 and 30 dollars i'm not even going to compare this to it because those i've used and like within two minutes of using Either the blade's gotten loose or the threading got gnarled up so you couldn't, you know, unfold it anymore. Or the handle collapses or a host of other um, problems, you know. I remember one of the first ones I had the blade, after a couple minutes of use, the blade had like bent forward. And um, I'm not even going to compare this to those cheap knockoffs. If you want to be a cheapskate and save 20 bucks and buy something in superior to this, um, yeah, go out and buy one of those cheap ones on Amazon. Speaking of price, this thing costs fifty dollars. For fifty dollars, I think this is one of the best e tools out there. Like I said, you can buy something cheap and regret it later. You know, buy once, cry once type thing, or buy twice and cry your whole life. Um, for fifty dollars, it's not the most expensive, but it's not the cheapest. But you're buying. American made is made by a small outfit, so um, attention to detail and um, just quality control and whatnot is going to be higher. I think it just looks more, not only functional, but I think it just looks sleeker as opposed to the standard run of the mill, you know, three folds with the D handle and all that stuff. I don't know, I like the looks of it more. It has the stainless blade, so. Um, you know, a lot of times when you're working around dirt, you're talking about abrasion plus moisture equals rust. And like I said, Togo Systems is a smaller company. You might recognize the name. It's not as well known. You might recognize the name because I reviewed the, their Trifecta Bivy, you know, I think about three months ago. And uh, also their 7-in-1 multi-purpose knife um, a month or two ago. The products they make are not... They don't make a lot of products, but the products they do make are, they might not look super flashy, but they're trying to make multi, they're trying to make useful gear. They're not trying to make flashy gear. So this might not look as flashy as those other like um, seven in one multifunction tool um, shovel or whatever, but it's going to be a lot more useful. Um, same goes for the bivy. It doesn't look like that much. It's a piece of Tyvek with a zipper on it, but it doesn't look as flashy, but it ends up being a lot more useful. That knife, the 7-in-1 knife that costs $20, um, I think competes right up there with like a Victorinox Farmer. I'm going to leave a link to their website below. Go check them out. I think the products they offer are pretty good, while not being all flashy and gimmicky. Um, what I'm trying to say is they don't sell gimmicky garbage. They sell um, kind of more utilitarian tools. So, I hope you like this review on the shovel. Um, never knew you could talk so much about a shovel, did you? If you like this video, if you like um, this topic, make sure to 
leave a big thumbs up uh, right down in that corner there's a red subscribe button if you haven't already but um, until next time uh, we'll see you out there